I gotta, I gotta say, man, you know, I, I, I was, uh, I had a brief stint as a Democrat when I voted for Obama and then felt disillusioned because it was like, it was war all over again. I don't, I don't much care for the Republican party. Mm -hmm. I'm, I think Donald Trump has done enough, like some good things, anti-war peace deals, pulling our troops back that I'm, I'm, I'm happy with, but I really do feel like it's been the Democratic party the entire time. Oh, Absolutely. It's been, first of all, they're the party of slavery. Oh, listen, listen. It, but but well, just real quick, what I was want to get to is a lot of people say that like, the party switched and I'm like, no, they went subversive. Right. Because when you say Black Lives Matter wants to destroy the family, I'm like, they're keeping up the legacy of destroying minority communities. Right. They are very crafty. It's what I call a beautiful ugly. The precision and the strategy and the tactics. Oh man, as a, as a person that plays chess, I'm like, wow, you guys really got that off. You convinced <laughs> all of the black people to donate to Black Lives Matter and seven hundred million dollars of that went to the Biden campaign. Well, that's not that it not necessarily. It's a, it's more complicated than that. It is. But I'm paraphrasing and simplifying it. Maybe let, oversimplifying. Let, let, let me let me give the best context I can, context I can. Yeah. So black so they say Black Lives Matter is not political. Yet for some reason, Act Blue, which is the Democrats' right. fundraising arm, is managing their funds. All of the resources. Now, now, Act Blue says that money that isn't claimed goes to Act Blue. So I'll put it this way. If you donate to Black Lives Matter, a portion of your donation goes to Act Blue. Mm -hmm. And if, if Black Lives Matter doesn't claim the don donation properly under some circumstances, Act Blue keeps it, which funds the Democrats' fundraising infrastructure. Bam. So it's not going to Joe Biden. But it is providing the Democratic Party a fundraising arm. And, you see and, what I mean? And the fundraising. You're, somebody, you're paying their infrastructure. Right. And the fundraising, all of the Democrats, after they, so after you lose or you're out of the running, you can then donate that money to whichever candidate yep. you choose to. And we so, all know where it's, it's, a, it's a money laundering scheme. It's a Ponzi scheme. So I think it's worse than that. It absolutely is because Ponzi schemes, if you do them right, it's only a scheme like a- Dude. Yeah, my I, I, I I'm from the south side of Chicago and I know a lot of people who didn't make it out. Yeah. And I think I, I had good parents. I was lucky. Yeah. And so when I see, you know, when I see what was one factor in my success in getting away and, and moving out and I'm not saying everybody there is doing bad. I mean, some middle right. class living. Right. But a lot of people, some like I know a couple of people who OD yeah. and one person who I you know when I was younger is dead from an overdose. People join gangs and I can see that. They, they had bad families. Yeah. Now, it's not always true. I mean, some of these people had a regular family and still got caught up. Just choices. But when I see Black Lives Matter say they want to disrupt the nuclear family, I'm saying you're convincing white suburban people to donate to an organization that's act actively hurting black communities by doing that. And then say there's no systemic racism. They're making it. It is literally did you, manufactured. Did that's you see an that, example of it. You see that actress recently? She came out in support for Donald Trump. She said... If you were voting for Joe Biden, Hillary Clinton, Kamala Harris, these are the people who have been in government for decades who literally created the systemic racism. Correct. And now you're voting for them. You're part of the problem. Beautiful, ugly. The yeah. fact that they could trick is a movie. Um, I think it was. I forget which movie it was. But the quote was the biggest trick that the devil ever pulled was convincing the world that he didn't exist. Yeah. And it's the same concept. It's no, no, no. We like. Kamala's wearing Timberlands getting off the plane, so she's clearly cool. <laughs> she's clearly down for the cause. This is the same woman that didn't want to let nonviolent cannabis guys that were locked up for weed not let them out of jail because California needed the like free slave labor. They, she essence. wanted to pay them a dollar an hour to put out wildfires. Bam. Not even a job. It was life risking stuff. Right. This is the same person that when she was on the breakfast club laughs about it. Yep. Yes, I smoked every now and then. So the beauty of it is, man, y'all really pulled that chess move off. The ugly is the intent and the deed and the actions and the outcome. As, a, as an objective person, I'm able to go, oh, man, you was really going to rob me that night. You, I saw it. I, you were good <laughs> up until you t telegraphed, and I could see you in the bar in the big mirror. I could see you talking with the dude over there. This happened to me in New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, oh, y'all were good. Y'all almost had me. The <laughs> objective in me is like, oh, man, y'all really got that off. The ugly in me is like, man, that's really messed up. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm emotionally unmoved by it. One, because I'm aware of it. And two, we at war. And if you're emotional in the middle of a war, that's how you get your head blown. Uh, I love military tactics, but I yeah. hate war. Right. So, so uh, what do you think about Donald Trump? Um, I like him on. So I don't, I don't really think about Donald Trump. So, so. Do you, uh, what about the Republicans? 
Some of them are cool. Most of them are rhinos. Yeah, yeah. Some of like <laughs> I don't I don't think that they know what they're statists. I don't think that yeah. a lot of them know what. I don't think that they know that they're we. This is a republic. I don't think that they know that the smallest republic is the individual. I don't think that they like their constituents. I think my man Larry Sharp came to the Solutionary Summit. He said most politicians actually hate you because they see you as like in the way of their aims. That's why they jump right. from the public to private sector. Make the rule this so I can jump back into private sector and benefit from the it's rule. Not, it's not about people anymore, man. It's about... It's like a, a point system. Right. These, these politicians, and not all of them, there's a, there's a handful that are good. A handful of them are, are Republicans, but it's, a, it's like eight. Right. I, I basically use that number because there were eight people who sided with Trump on withdrawing the troops. Yeah. Eight, eight Republicans and three Democrats. And I'm right. like, all right, y'all are cool. Not completely because there's probably things I disagree with. But you have very, very few uh, of these people. And, and the rest of them, they just want the keys to the castle. Right. So what, 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 the way they look at the constituents is they have a chart saying, here's how you're swinging. So they don't, they don't care about you necessarily. Most of these people, they care about, what am I up? Right. And they say, ooh, you're down four. Ooh, I'm down four. How can we get me up three? Where's some Timberlands? And exactly. That's, that's purely because exactly. they want to get yeah. reelected. Right. This, but is, term, it's, this it's, is another reason for term limits. So, so yeah. I, I asked Thomas Massey about this term limit thing in, in Congress, right? He said that would be a cotton candy solution. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? He's like, cotton candy's like, it's, you taste it, and it does it is it's kind of food like, but it doesn't really sustain you. He was like, you know, he pulled out his um his uh Congress like whatever card they give him in the number, right? He's like, this number means that there's this many people. I'm this many people senior, so this amount of people have actually been in Congress less than me. Wow. And so it's not about term limits. It's what you do with the time that you get there. Right. Right. Um, but that means the reason why the term limits. They're able to pull off a lot of this beautiful, ugly and be there for 50 years, Joe Biden, and not do anything is because the people are not educated about what makes a good public servant. Hence, systematically taking civics and social studies out of schools. Right. You don't even know what that process is. You know what I mean? And so the term limit thing would be because then, OK, let's sit flip side to that coin. What if there's a guy or a woman in there doing great? And it's like, oh, you're doing great. Time's up. And it's like, then you get like a complete trash politician right after them. So that pendulum swings both ways. Back to your question about President Trump. I love him on, first shouts to him for freeing a good friend of mine, Angela Stanton King. He gave her a presidential pardon. Um, she's running for Congress in District 5 in Atlanta, John Lewis's old seat. Oh, wow. She came to the Solutionary Summit. Everybody should check into her. She's Atlanta as they come. And I, I would trust somebody like her in that seat that wants to protect children, that wants to push actual conservative values and serve the people of Atlanta, right? He gave her a presidential pardon. I, last I know, like, racists don't do that, right? So this whole, like, is he racist? I don't, look, I don't care if he is. I don't know him personally. Don Jr. follows me. We chop it up here and there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don's a shooter. I like that. I think Don should run for the, like mayor of New York or something. That's what I think. Um, but I don't evaluate politicians based on like if I like them. Yeah. I like. I don't need to like you. You're a plumber, oh, to me. dude. I hire you. I got a clog. Like get the clog out. Now you'll do a job, and I'm like, bro. Not only did you get the clog out, he showed me, like, in two months, you're going to have a clog in this one. You don't have to hire me now, but let me tell you why. And two months later, if I get the clog, I'm like, this guy was on it, right? And I'm hiring him. I don't care if he's got his butt crack showing. I don't care. Did he get the clog out? So, so here's, here's this, it's actually an analogy I use for, like, a plumber. Mm. You, got, you, hire, you hire two plumbers, or two plumbers come to your house, give you a quote. Mm. One guy, he looks terrible. His butt crack sticking out. He mm. won't stop cussing. Yeah. But you know he's got a good record. Like, he, well, actually, you, you might have never hired him before. The other guys look, you know, sharp, but they're, you know, they can't stop complaining about the guy with the butt crack. Yeah. So you got one guy with a butt crack, and he's telling you he's going to get it done. You hire him. He starts getting it done, and these guys won't shut up. Mm -hmm. But they're demanding you give them the contract while this dude's literally trying Doing to fix the your work. toilet. And then they start hitting the guy fixing the toilet, and you're like, let him fix my toilet, dude. Right. He's getting it. And they won't stop. 
You right. think I'm gonna ever give you a contract again? It's not happening. But the Never. difference of the plumber is that after the guy fixes the clog, then his job is to go out on the street and represent you to the neighborhood. And if he's an, a jerk, that's a problem. Well, it could be, but depending on what your what your meter of success is. My I, so so for example, President Obama is one of my favorite politicians of all time. I think he's a great symbol for melanated young people especially i think that you know the audacity of hope and letters from my, to my father is like some of the best reading i've ever done i like that he was like the first president of like harvard law or whatever school that was i think that that's dope i think he was smooth i think that presidential beige suit was like the coldest suit ever <laughs> right i think that he he he, he got through things that i would have been smack somebody in the mouth behind and for those reasons, he's one of one of my favorite politicians for those reasons, for that list. Then I pan over to policy. And then I go, no, you, you, you campaigned on closing Gitmo. You didn't. You campaigned on uh, getting us out of Iraq and Afghanistan. You didn't. You campaigned on the Patriot Act being the most horrible thing ever. You re-upped on it. So when I look at policy, I can evaluate you. There's really hot girls that I'm like, oh, man, she's so hot. I would never touch her with a 10-foot pole, but she's so hot. And I would never touch her because her spirit is corrupt. I can feel it. Is that what you think about Obama? I think that Obama, as a, as a human, I don't know him. I can only base it on his symbolism and his substance. Bro. You know what I mean? And I, the, the substance of it, I got to disagree with. The, with President Trump. I think he has gotten things done great in regards to business and the economy. I think that he's been attacked tremendously, more so than any president that I've seen. Maybe second, maybe, or first, the, the, they're running neck and neck, him and Obama, depending on which side is attacking, right? I agree with him on a lot of things. I disagree. I think his stance on guns has been weak. I think that he's had more federal restrictions on the Second Amendment than Obama in one term than Obama did in two. And that's just me evaluating my plumbers. That's it. Right. Obama's like a guy who would go out on the street. Everyone loves him. So they're like, oh, I love you. have a great guy out and on the street, it, but he can't fix the leak. No, 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 right. no. And no, Trump no, fixes uh -uh. the leak, goes out and yells at people. And they're like, I can't stand him. I'm, or you, because he's, he's your plumber. I'm going to tell right. you what Obama was. Obama was the guy who walked up to your front door with a smile on his face. And he was like, hey, and he winks. And you're like, oh, this guy's so amazing. He's like, I'm going to go make you all look good. Walked to the rich people's houses and winked at them, and then walked over to the poor house and started smacking people and kicking them around. And that was his foreign policy. And then he comes and he says at your house, he says, I'll tell you what, I look great. And I can snatch up your kids in the middle of the night, rendition them in an off on an offshore oil rig. You'll never hear from them again. That's the National Defense Authorization mm -hmm. Act indefinite detention provision. So I, I, I hear exactly what you're saying, dude. Now, he, he, now. Was, he was smooth. He was, he was charismatic. He, and, and he inspired people. And then when it came to policy, he was the same exact thing I saw in George W. And Bush. And this is what? This is our fault, though. It's our fault. Yeah, I agree with that. We, we are not making politicians afraid again. <laughs> this it's is our, job. our Trump fault. Is. We are but the is government. He? But is he? I think so. They've been screaming nonstop. I think they've been five years. I, I, I think they've been screaming nonstop on the left. I think that. For sure. I yeah. think that. But they scream. That's what they do. You know what I'm saying? I think that I think that we been should have had people out. It's 19, 20 years later. Afghanistan, it's over. Like it's done. It's done. Get them home. It's, don't say get them home. You are the commander in chief. You are the commander in chief. I think that do do does he leave something to be desired in regards to his approach? Absolutely. But then when I look at how the economy was humming. Oh, yeah. I've made more legal money, maybe or maybe <laughs> not, allegedly. Right? With this being the case, those parts, if you're being objective, that's, that's how I view it. But I also am a one-issue voter, and I cannot ignore the fact that he has been weak on the Second Amendment. I was in the front row at the NRA annual meetings when he first was elected, and he was the first stand sitting president to address the NRA convention. I was literally in the front row when he said, the eight-year assault on your Second Amendment rights is coming to a crashing halt. That's not the case. That doesn't mesh with 
And again, I'm not attacking them. I'm not. I'm. This is the plumber. You can't say that and then say, take the guns first, due process later. That is not something that I want to hear from my commander in chief. That is not what our nation needs to hear. I think that what happens is because we have become so complacent with this two party system that everybody gets barbecued up on July the 4th. But George Washington and the boys literally were like, do not do a party system. Yeah. So I think now this time, this is the time that we should be looking into strengthening a third party. Yeah. Have you, I just have you ever Bernie about that last night? Have you ever read the original Second Amendment? No, I didn't. I didn't know about this until I actually looked up the Bill of Rights, and we were, I, f- I forgot what this what segment we were talking about. And there was originally 17 articles proposed. Mm. It was because there were a lot of people who were scared of a strong federal government, like basically the oppressive federalists. So they said, okay, we'll take these 17 things. A bunch of them didn't make it. But the original Second Amendment was very clear that it, 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 I'm probably going to get this wrong. So, you know, the gunner, gunners out there, super chat, correct me if I'm getting it wrong. But it basically said something like if you it says, uh, you know, a well-regulated militia being you know necessary for a free state, the right to keep and bear arms should not be restricted. And it said basically if somebody doesn't want to join you know military service in any way, doesn't mean they can't own a gun. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why did you get rid of that part? I think it was because it like the language banned conscription. Yeah. And so they ended up getting rid of it. They kept that. that you can see the spirit of what they meant. Yeah. They meant everybody should have firearms. Everybody should be, should be armed. And they get rid of this one provision. And now, now the left says, oh, but a well-regulated militia. Means the military. Right, right, right. But they clearly said, even if you don't want to, you can keep your weapon. Here's the bigger part to that to me. The Bill of Rights was the double down to say, Hey, guys, remember, these are things not granted by government, nor can government take them away. Like, just in case in 100 years, everybody gets stupid. These list of things, your right to express yourself and then the right to defend what you just said is not granted by government. It's not taken away. They just did a good job of studying governments prior to and codifying human nature and natural law. Thomas Paine. John Locke, those dudes were somewhere else. You know, I liken them, they're not singers to my knowledge, but when you hear Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, Freddie Mercury was somewhere else to write those changeovers and that, like, he was somewhere else. You're saying, like, it was profound, like, so good. They must have been... Somewhere else. They, yeah. was, they, they had hemp farms. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And so they... They were somewhere else in their understanding of liberty because they had seen, one, they just came from a tyrannical government. And by studying, these guys were, not only were they like, and they had their contradictions because you notice I keep saying guys, there were no women. So that's strike one, right? These guys were like craftsmen and builders and architects and like, like guys that like made stuff. That's the power of creation, that's like the power of God. You see what I'm saying? And they tied it into a moral compass feeling thing. And to, to double down and say, hey, we're going to make this extra list. So, so we remember that we're making this stuff to like check government. So when we talk about what's a bootlicker, what's a statist, these are the people that think that this is for the government to tell us what to do, not us to put the government on time out if we, they start reaching We are the much. government. Right. And so that's the part that um, we've become, we, even though I'm not a Republican or a Democrat, I am a libertarian um, with, with, strong, conserv- with conserv- strong conservative values, strong conservative values. And I'm cool with if everybody else in the liberty movement is like, yeah, there should be open borders. I'm going to go, that's cool that you think that. I don't. Right. Um, this is why I say it's our fault, though, because we are not self-educating. We are not. The information's there. I got five phones on me, literally. You, the information's there. The conversations are being had. The geniuses have left their blueprints. You know, this is why in 2022, I'm like 98% going to just go be on my planet and do my thing. I believe that Americans, and this, this hurts to say, I believe that Americans are too soft. 
They're too marshmallow, and we don't want to do what's necessary. When Obama got elected, I remember he was anti-war, and I was anti-war, and there was a building anti-war movement. Then he got elected, and there was no more movement. The money le leaned on him. And the president can't do anything if the people aren't surging. Yep. It's our job. Yep. And it's the same thing with Hillary. Remember Hillary used to, like, fight so hard for universal health care. She used to fight for it. Then she started getting funded by insurance. And that conversation stopped. The, at a certain point, you got to look at what your legacy is. To me, if I picked, like if I went hard left or hard right, oh man, I'd have a TV show. Like it would like, I'm charismatic. I'm handsome. Right? I, I'm reasonably smart. If I picked a side as opposed to being balanced and objective, like even in the chat, there's going to be, as you guys scroll through this, there's going to be people that are saying, I'm insane, I'm a terrorist, I'm one of those black power dudes. Then there's going to be people going, he's a patriot, depending bro, bro. on what I'm talking about. I'm looking at right here, people being like, this guy's awful, and another guy being like, dude, I was cheering, I can't believe it, this is awesome. You're an interesting dude, man. It's, it's layers, it's yeah. context, it's contextual, it's the, the, the gray area that is what most of us actually are. But we've been forced into picking one of these sides. And then we keep, again, July 4th reference. We keep going, America, America, America. But the founding fathers that we say that we support, we don't even have a conversation about Thomas Paine, who, who, who shaped the minds of, like, damn near all of those guys. You know what I mean? And so when you have someone such as myself or other people that show up that are in those gray areas and saying, I agree here, I disagree here. I'm feeling this, I'm not feeling that. Those people get vilified ridiculed on this side depending on the conversation and heralded and celebrated on this side depending on the conversation and it switches and it ebbs and flows and i'm cool with that thanks for checking out this clip from the timcast irl podcast we do the show live monday through friday at 8 p.m so come back to check us out when we go live don't forget to subscribe hit the like button hit the notification bell and we are also available on all podcast platforms for free if you want to listen to us there thanks for hanging out and we will see you all next time.